Hi everyone, I'm Tom Davis with eXp Realty and today we're going to talk about rent control. Many of you might have seen that rent control legislation was just passed in California. So we have Adrian Del Rio here with us and he is going to share some information about rent control and what it means to you. Adrian, how are you doing? Good, how are you Tom? Good to thanks, see you. Thanks for having me man. The important thing to know about rent control is it was just implemented. Governor Newsom just d did just sign the bill. So it, it's here, it's a reality. M most owners have, part of, as part of the rent control bill, they've only understood one and heard one part of it, that they're, they're capping their increases on, on rents. Right. And it's a cap that's 5% plus the consumer price right. index, works out to be about 7%. So most owners, they typically raise their rents two to 5% per year. Wow, so don't so, freak out. So they're, well, they're, they're not freaking out because they're saying, well, hold on, it's not that bad. I actually right. received the pay raise because I don't actually ever <laughs> increase my rents that much. Right, yeah. The issue is there, there's underlying elements to the bill that are really going to potentially cause problems uh, later on in the long run to both the owner and the tenant. And it's called just cause eviction where an owner has to provide a reasonable cause with evidence right. to evict an unlawful tenant that has breached the lease agreement. Sure. And they have to go in front of a rental board. That, that's going to be the biggest issue with this. Let me ask you a question real quick. As far as single family dwellings, SFRs, what does it mean to a landlord that owns either a rental property or s several single family properties? It's a great question. Single family SFRs are exempt from rent control, except, here's the, the caveat, except if they're owned by a corporation or a managing member of an LLC that owns a corporation. The okay. guidelines haven't come out on that, right? but that's gonna be an important fact when people go to purchase an investment of a single family resident before they say, well, it's exempt from rent control. Right. You might have to vest in a certain manner, either, either personally or in your trust. Sure. And how, then, sorry, go ahead. How about duplex, fourplex, and then eight and 16 units on up the ladder? Those are all subject to rent control. Okay. It, unless in a duplex, if the owner lives in one of the units, then it's exempt from rent control. And the, I mean, it's not, it, it is exempt from rent control. The ones that, if it's built from 2005 and newer, it's going to be exempt, or if okay. they receive the certificate of occupancy okay. within 15 years, it's exempt. The rest of it is, is fair game and, and protected under rent control. And that's a direct contradiction, too, of Costa-Hawkins Act, which said anything 1995 and newer is exempt from right. rent control. So in essence, it took 10 years off of that. Sure. So it's, going to be a tri it's going to be tricky for owners and realtors as well, because it doesn't replace any local ordinances that are already under rent control. Right. But the mo the string the more stringent of the two is going to apply. So you you have to know local ordinance and also right. the statewide one to see which one right. applies. Right. So it sounds like what I'm hearing is get educated. Um, give us a call. Either call myself. Um, or Adrian Del Rio. Adrian, how can someone reach out to you? How can someone get a hold of you? And what company are you with? With PCG Commercial. You can follow us on our blog. We're posting articles. We've studied this bill quite a bit, and it's changing uh, every week as well uh, as it gets closer to being implemented. You can follow us at pcgcommercial.com forward slash blog forward slash, or you can contact us at 916-303-0133. Adrian, as always, thanks for coming by. Thanks Thank for the info. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks.